All right, um, check, check, check. Okay, not too loud. A little background sound shouldn't be too bad. We're in a park. Yay! Um, I, we did a long recording last weekend, but after like thinking about it, I just decided basically not to use any of it. Yeah. It's like I do this a lot. I have so many, I make a lot of recordings and just toss them out, but I wanted to, we, we were having a very spirited discussion earlier today. I don't mean we were arguing, I mean it was spirited about stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to run through it and see if we could replay a little of the thinking behind that. Um, and I'm using as a jumping off point a conversation that I, that I had on the shitter. Mm. I don't mean on the, on the, the toilet, toilet. No. I mean X-I-T-T-E-R, <laughs> the, yeah. the new X twitter which i just call the shitter yeah um so i had posted an, uh, a tw uh, a zeet <laughs> a shit posted what, some shit uh, the a uh, post i guess is calling it which this you can just there's so much evidence that this wasn't thought through very well right as yeah. to what the branding was going to read like um I suggest that folks leave the mRNA vaccines behind and go forward with Novavax for future boosters. Yes. Grace is, is getting in closer to me because she's she's being menaced by a, a bee. <laughs> and yeah, I, I don't mean to laugh. I know you're allergic. Hopefully, and I have my I have my you have your EpiPen with you. Yeah. It's they seem to know. They know. Like they don't usually come for me. But now it's like, hey, but you. they come for you. It might be because you're wearing a dress that's covered with flowers. Maybe so. It's one of the more semi-realistic. Yeah. Well, to a bee, it like doesn't a, take yeah. much. <laughs> nope. nope. Um, so, but yeah, I, I don't, if you get stung, we'll quickly stop this podcast. It'll be. The event was stinging. Yes. Yes. Um, but I, I get stung occasionally. They, I don't have that reaction. It's it's unfortunate you've become sensitized to the oh. to possibly a dangerous degree. Yeah, it, it's it's always been there. I'm not actually available for you, Mr. B. <laughs> you cannot pollinate me. Nope. Hey, how about this? You know, he seems to like Oh, he wants your sugar. soda. It's a yellow jacket. They go after sugar. Hey, why don't you just? Yeah, you're setting that over there. Why don't you just crawl down, right down that straw, and uh, dig in. Dig in. Have and all you want, friend. It's for you. Yeah. Enjoy. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'll put it in the trash when we're done, but just now, I just want them away. Malachi got, a couple of weeks ago, Malachi, we think, got stung on the lip while he was actually asleep. See, I'm not, I'm not down with that theory, but go on. Well, the... The best theory I could come up with, and I did see a tiny little spot that looked like a, a bee sting. Okay. Was that he got stung by it. Like, he may have rolled onto it or touched it or Some something. Some kind of stinging insect in the house. And he got, it was right on his lip, and he looked like Homer Simpson. He did. <laughs> it was, it was really comical. He didn't seem to be in any pain or any trouble. Yes. It went away with Benadryl. We, we watched him closely. You actually called, had a televisit with a practitioner who suggested... Fig helped you figure out a good dose of Benadryl for him. Yes. And we kept an eye on him. He didn't ever have any agitation or trouble breathing or any of the sign like signs that. of severe anaphylaxis. But, right. But it was comical. <laughs> Absolutely comical. Walking around for a day looking like one of the Simpsons. Yes. Yes. And, and kind of horrifying. He wakes up and looks at you and he's like, what? <laughs> What's happened to your face? You look like a Simpson. Yeah. Wait, do I look like a Simpson? Is this an alternate maybe reality? We're all Simpsons. We woke up, we all look like realistic Simpsons. Yeah, wild, but here we are. Uh, so, yeah. anyway, as a jumping off point, I wanted to start with this tweet and talk about soft minimizers. Oh, yeah. Or, or maybe you would call them, they would call themselves like vaccine realists. Oh, realists. Or COVID or realists. Co COVID realists. Or, or or centrist, um, as opposed to people who are novid, who are deemed to be, you know, extremists. Uh, I, I think of those, and I consider myself to be a zero COVID extremist. Zero COVID extremist. Well, I, I, that's how I would self-describe. Wear it as a badge of honor because they're using it as a badge of ridicule, you know. Um, of what time I'm aware, but yes, no, yes. I, I think that's actually an accurate assessment 
that I am a zero, zero COVID, COVID extremist. Yes. I, I would certainly say that I am a uh, hardcore um, minimizer in that I want to minimize the actual <laughs> risks of the, the disease, disease. <laughs> not minimize people's the legitimate concerns about the disease. Right, right. right. Okay. A COVID minimalist. So... I'm going to just, I'm going to try to, to try to be neutral. I'm going to refer to the person that I got in this debate with. Yes. As my interlocutor. Certainly. Uh, I'm not going to give his, his shitter handle. Um, right. But. Uh, Do you know that's covered with the disease, but go on. <laughs> <laughs> John Snow replaced the handle or took away the <laughs> toilet handle, handle and suddenly all the, all the, all the, all the COVID online. went away. <laughs> all the COVID went away. Wow. Uh, but pe people could no longer jeet and then suddenly... <laughs> so they just went away. Uh -oh. It was a miracle. Exactly. So he asked, why? And I, then I'm, at this point I'm asking myself, why, why do I get into this? But, <laughs> right. but at the same <laughs> time I'm people? like, well, let me take the step of initially assuming that this is somehow a good faith question, which it very likely isn't, I know. But yeah, and I did a quick skim of this guy's, uh, you know, profile and page, and he's not a three follower, you know, brand new, popped bot out of whatever. nowhere, bot or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and he wasn't a MAGA, and he didn't seem to be. Uh, he's not a blue check. Yeah. So, and I said many reasons. Neither Novavax or the mRNA vaccines are, quote, sterilizing, unquote. They don't stop transmission or prevent long COVID. But there is some evidence accumulating that Novavax is more robust against the variants we've seen to date and may help some people with long COVID. And then his response. Mm -hmm. I say his. I, Your interlocutor's response. My interlocutor's response. I'm not certain that this is a... I think this is, this is the case for singular they. They. I hate using that, but... Yeah, I know. I'll try to use it. Bro. Oh, he's back. It's right over there. It's literally over there. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, go to the park. They said it'll be fun. They said. Go. <laughs> Here we are. Enjoy nature. Terrorized nature trying to kill me. Yeah. He said, well, they don't stop transmission if you define stopping as exclusively stopping 100% of the time. But it's far too early to draw broad conclusions about whether Novavax is more likely to be robust against future variants and long COVID. Mm -hmm. And go ahead. First of all, um, first of all, I'm sorry. Why don't you get on this side of me and we'll try this way. We'll try this way. Mm -hmm. um, now he's landing on me. Oh, come on, dude. Why are you this way? I'm talking to a yellow jacket. Yep, yep. Are, you, are you really going to fuck this Why up for us? Why is he so aggressive? I guess, maybe, is he, does, wait, does he have a hive here? No, I don't think so. If he was a hive, he'd be flying into it. You'd think. Are you'd we think. sitting on his hive? I don't think we are. We don't see any others or hear any others. No, but yeah, actually, I do see a hole in the ground, but it looks larger. It's like for a chipmunk, not for a bee. Yeah, okay. And I, I don't see others. Yeah, yellow jackets live in the ground usually, don't they? They do. Well, maybe that is his, maybe this is his jam. Okay, but you no. should just go okay. in his home. <laughs> go in your home. You go live in here. your home. Go in your home. Okay. This is not your home. My face is not your home. No. So, so he wants to know okay. why. And he says, what about stopping? If you define stopping as exclusively stopping 100% of the time. And I didn't say this, but I'm like, what are we down to now? Like, mm -hmm. the, it's hard to get good numbers anymore. But, um, one moment. Okay. What are we down to now? 30% reduction in transmission? Oh, it's very low for the mRNA vaccine. I, I yeah. want to say it's... So I'm sure someone can, can find a document somewhere that says something different. I think it's 25%. Yeah, it's... It's so like the thing they were talking about when the vaccine was released, about how it has 95% of efficacy. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. That efficacy is actually, at this point in time, around 25% efficacy. Yeah. So it's not a matter of 95 versus perfect or versus 100. I would no. not expect any single pharmaceutical fact in a vaccine to be 100% at anything, honestly. Right, 100%. Even like the really good vaccines. Right. Um, but so There are individuals for whom it's not 100%, right? But so, exist. so this first argument that, you know, well, sure, if you're expecting it to be perfect, I'm like, no, I just expect it to be better than nothing. Better than nothing. Right. right. And it's barely better than it's nothing. It's barely better than nothing. Well, because I think a lot of people aren't aware, we have a lot of vaccines. We have a cholera vaccine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We have a tuberculosis vaccine. Yeah. You haven't heard of it and we don't use it because they're 10 to 25% effective. Yeah. And it's barely they're worth only the financial effort. They're on a big population to slow an outbreak, right? Uh, yes. Or Except that um, for cholera and uh, tuberculosis both, yeah. it is more effective. So in other words, let's say you have a limited pool of money right. to, pers- to spend on an intervention. It's not going to be your most cost-effective. It's not the most cost-effective sure. intervention to get 100% vaccination with a 10 or 25% effective vaccine. Yeah. It's far more effective for tuberculosis to get everybody in elastomeric mass. Yes. It's far more effective yeah. for cholera to have clean uh, water. Clean, <laughs> right? to, well, basically, to have um, uh, sewage sanitation. Yeah, right. You you keep your septic away from your drinking water. From your drinking water. That's the, so. If you have a limited funds, that's, that's where, where you, you want to put the money. money, not on a low effect, low effectiveness vaccine. Yeah. So, anyway, already I think he's like getting into an annoying type of arguing where he's not. Like, well, he's, vaccines he's, aren't perfect, This is but. A, straw, a bit of a straw man. It's not like a full-on straw man, but he's, it's leading that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, and I, you know, continue the discussion. I'm not a virologist, but what I've read suggests that it already, I'm talking about the second point, right? It already has maintained effectiveness against variants to date better than the MRA, mRNA vaccines. And you know what? I don't. Main, I'm not actually maintaining a, a list of s- my sources like I probably should to because it's I don't feel that it's I'm not one of these uh, actual experts who has a Twitter account and who oh, posts right. the papers all the time. Right. I read as many papers as I can and I follow some smart people. Uh, my criterion is basically I'm looking for well criteria is I'm looking for people who actually have some credibility in their field and who seem to be fundamentally oriented towards the precautionary principle. Yes. As opposed to, say, a Bob Wachter who literally is dying of COVID and, and continues to, to do his mental math and calculate that actually it's fine for him to go unmasked into his, a restaurant yeah, or, sure, not or a, a problem. conference. Nothing to be concerned about. Or a workplace. And Risk like, is low. And he literally like while sick with COVID literally fell and hit his head hard enough to require hospitalization. Yes. And his conclusion from this was, wow, hot showers are dangerous. I, you know, set a rush of blood to, you know, to my extremities. And, uh, I, you know, yeah. And that was the real, that's the real danger. Away. Right. What those hot that, showers? This is just, I mean, <laughs> did you fall? Because of COVID or with COVID? COVID. (laughs) Like, it's just so dumb. I can't, literally can't believe it. He's back on here after this infection, justifying how he can give grand rounds and see patients and go around in his institution unmasked because according to his I don't know if I've given it to you, but I hope not. Yeah, he literally, he hopes he hasn't spread it, right? And like, I'm sorry, I I need you to do a little better as a professor, as a, as a, you know, infectious disease expert, as this and that and the other thing, as a role model, as a senior leadership in a hospital setting in the university, I need you to do a little bit better than hope and prayers. Yeah. Jesus. Anyway. That's pretty bad. Um, but yes. I said, anecdotally, it has improved my long COVID symptoms. But yes, I will be watching with interest as more studies arrive. Mm-hmm. And the thing about that is, is we've, we've had um, the the vaccines actually rolled out in late 2020, right? The mRNA vaccines and J&J. I held out until March, March, April 20, 
21 to get yep. my first uh, shots because I actually didn't want to be a line jumper. Oh, I right. wanted to make sure that all the people who were higher risk factors than I had higher risk factors than I did mm -hmm. got theirs early. First. Right. Yeah, it's fair. Totally fair. But they've, they've been in existence. They've been around since November of 2020. Yes. So we're coming up on um, three years. Yes. There's a lot of data. There is a lot of data. Novavax was actually introduced, I believe, a little over a year ago. We have a year of data in comparison. Right. And the right. original Novavax, right. much like the original um, mRNA. mRNAs, was not were better. targeted for the same group of viruses, right? Right. right. And uh, Novavax is a subunit, a protein subunit vaccine versus mRNA. an mRNA vaccine. Yeah. And what we've actually seen is that as variants diverge from the original thing, the mRNA vaccine drops off faster. Drops off really quick the, with the uh, antibody effectiveness. Right, drops, drops off. off really quick. Yes. Uh, J and J was not mRNA and targeted uh, T cells. Yeah. And we also noticed very uh, significant improvements in durability in the J and J vaccine as well. Mm -hmm. um, over mRNA vaccines. Right. Oh, I don't have as many. Uh, you you spend more time reading papers on this than I do. Right. I don't have all these papers at my fingertips, no. but I can point to some people's feeds. You know, but but it's again, it's this isn't really my job. Well, it's not really your right. job. But I think the other bit of information, though, or the main point I'm making is there's lots of data. There's That's actually lots of data. what he's saying is fundamentally untrue. It's yeah, not true. Yeah, there's lots of yeah. data, and we do know because. Uh, while Novavax has been available in this population, uh, Subrana 2 was available in late 2021, early 2022. Yeah. We have close to two years of data, and Subrana 2 and Novavax are not the same vaccine, but it's the same kind of technology. Which one is this? Subrana 2 is Cuba's vaccine. That's Cuba, okay. And they're vaccinating everyone two and up. Yeah. A full vaccination series, similar to Novavax vaccination. Yeah. And, no and, and boosters, as needed. Mm -hmm. And what they've seen is far greater durability that people's vaccines from 20, early 2022, late 2021 with Soberana mm -hmm. are demonstrating higher effectiveness against current variants now yeah. and they, as I, compared to mRNA vaccines. And I think they've had better results as far as transmission. As far as transmission, transmission. blocking transmission. Yeah. And, um, and so in other words, they've reduced severity of disease by blocking transmission broadly. Yeah. And I want to be very clear. The other thing that Cuba has done is they... Right now, August of 2023, you are still required to mask indoors and out in Cuba. Yes. Tourists and, and regulars alike. Enforcement so, is a good question. Yeah. But that's that's what required. the rule is. So you'll get we'll get to that because that's another topic that we went into. But yeah, I on. continued. I said some of my bias against the mRNA vaccines is not so much that they aren't useful because I do believe that they were useful, but the degree to which they were over promoted beyond what was reasonable to expect. With yes. Delta, we were initially told breakthrough infections were rare and contrary voices were dismissed. Oh, and that people who were vaccinated didn't even need to mask. Yeah, that that there was maybe a 10% breakthrough rate. And it yeah. turned out to be more like, I don't know, 70%. 70, or 70 plus. And it got worse. And yep. we as this, and we were tracking this over the course of 2021. 20, we had a whole long series of podcasts about mm -hmm. Delta. The data yeah. was out there. The articles were out there. The explainers were out there. You it was know, out there. like the if if you don't read Nature papers in Nature or whatever, but but you can read you know a, a targeted a, a science article or interview that's targeted at a slightly more general audience. Yes, right? you, they, that's information that out there. It was there. I said, much of the establishment continues to push the line that we have the tools when they really mean the mRNA vaccines and Paxlovid and nothing else. Yes. The results have been disastrous. He's, and then in brackets, he says, looking at the summer surge and widespread long COVID. Mm -hmm. And my interlocutor said, isn't that really just the classic argument between the perfect and the good? <laughs> Again, nearly a straw man. Yeah. Because I never set up that we have to do perfect. No. Nope. So what were the other vaccines developed that were demonstrated to perform better? Nobody was stopping anyone from develop, developing them just because mRNA vaccines existed. And I'm going to pause there and say, 
this is exactly what happens with first past the post winners and losers, right? Yes. Where the government literally picks winners and losers. Yes. And if they, you, it's not some kind of deep, dark conspiracy to look at who donates the most money to campaigns. And then who gets... And Pfizer is one of the biggest. Yes. One of the biggest pharma contributors. And then who winds up with the approval? The contract approval. Uh, contracts and the and the guaranteed purchases, you know. Yes. As as um, so yeah, I mean we can do single payer. It's just we only are willing to do single payer to the biggest the people that bribe the government the yes. most. We'll do single payer for them. Right. So. So um, yeah. Who who was doing other ones? Well, we've discussed several. Yes. Right. Um, yes. But, like, here in Michigan, which is a Pfizer state. Oh, yeah. They manufacture here. Yep. Unless uh, they may have moved everything to some place marginally um, cheaper now. but there, still... There's a Pfizer plant in Ann Arbor and they shut down and fired, or, or pardon me, I gave early retirement to a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, 20 years ago, right? Yeah. Um, but a lot of that infrastructure is still here and they still have, like, tentacles in the community. Right. So there's, there's you know... So this means it's very hard to get, and I will never forget, like, arranging an appointment to get J&J, &J, being told over the phone that this place had J&J, &J, and then showing up, like, it wasn't Christmas Eve, but it was like two days before Christmas or it was something. Really close to Christmas it was break. like, I wanted to get a booster before Christmas break, 2021, late, you know. Late 2021. And showing up and being told... Oh no, we don't have we don't have that. We don't have JJ. Like, I just have got confirmed. I just confirmed this over the phone that you had this in stock, and I could get a J and J booster because I wanted. There was evidence even in twenty twenty one that a mix and match booster strategy was more showed effective. some additional effectiveness. Yes, and I wanted to try that um, because I had already lost some confidence in the mRNA vaccines, not that I had great confidence, but I was looking for whatever tool was available, right? Right. Uh, then he said, my interlocutor, we should never just assume that any particular level of efficacy is obtainable. Uh, again, trivially true, right? Cancers mm -hmm. have been studied for over a hundred years and not a single real cure has been found. Well, that is somewhat debatable. People do go into complete remission and live the rest of their lives. But yes, it's always, it's a crapshoot with cancer. And it's yeah. all a matter of percentages. And many times, my, my own mother, you know, you think that your treatment was successful. And, and it then, was not. Uh, you know, uh, get, you get a year. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly you're like, oh shit, it's now everywhere. Right. Because we did poor follow-up, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting to me that you choose this cancer and a cure for cancer. Right. When actually what we've discovered over the last hundred years is that a lot of cancer is environmental and epigenetic. Cancer prevention has a big role, but people don't want to... But want to talk about it. Don't want to talk about it. Because um, it's much easier to sell a cure than it is to stop practices that affect epigenetics and bring about cancers. Right. And yes, there are huge roles that, that environmental exposure and epigenetics and, and um, plus, you know, lifestyle, right? But not as, lifestyle maybe not as, as, you know, everyone wants to blame it on, oh, well, it was your fault for eating pizza. Or, you know, oh. you ate, you ate, you know, food with nitrates in it, right? Yeah. It's like. It sucks to be you. You should've made better choices. You should have, you should have had, you know, grilled salmon and the Mediterranean diet instead of that pepperoni pizza. It's like, well, maybe you can afford the fucking grilled salmon. Med one. Mediterranean diet. So. Uh, on and on. On and on. Right. So anyway, I wrote back, um, it always seemed unlikely, and I mean unlikely to me, right, mm -hmm. that we'd get a first vaccine against a coronavirus that was effective as, say, the current measles vaccine. If you look a little bit, I'm not a... I'm not a virologist, but you or look into it right? a little bit and mm -hmm. you're like, wow, this is just how coronaviruses behave. It's one of their fundamental characteristics yes. is they mutate constantly. Yes. All, they can mutate almost in every single transmission, yes. you know, sometimes within a single host over and over again. And, yes. and they can do recombination too. Yes. Where they can <laughs> share mutations with each other. They have all these tricks. 
Yes. It's remarkable. Knowing this, it's like, well, so when you say the common cold, there's a number of viruses. Some of them are coronaviruses. Yeah. And the fact that some of them are coronaviruses is one of the reasons that we've never had any success developing a, a useful vaccine against the common cold. Yeah. Right. It, it's really not, right. not something that you, we've been able to do in the past. And there's so, actually no reason to believe that suddenly, at this moment, right. we, we can, we did. Right. So, but, um, I mean, big picture, they wanted to try out and test out and promote their, their, this new technology. Right. And they did. And they did. They and got a lot of data. They got a lot of data, and it's not significantly better than, you know, except the fact that my, I'm now magnetic and my car keys stick to my face, you know, and I can pick up 5G. Which you were all, you've were you been looking for. I've that really, for that's time. what I wanted. And yeah. so I, I got that, you know. But other I, than I that, hear George Soros's voice muttering in my head 24 7. Is that normal? That's perfectly, perfectly normal. normal. But, you know, aside from all that, um, it, ha it has not proven to be uh, what they sold it as. Because no. they did sell it as, including my own doctor told me, I was, con I was talking about con being concerned about transmission and this ongoing pandemic and variants coming in and whatnot and how this was just going to be an endless cycle of sickness. And he's like, well, you've gotten fully vaccinated. You've done all you can. Yes. That's like, everything uh, you can do. So... Which is not true. Just to be clear. It, it is absolutely not true. It's not true. true that's everything you can do. Now, he should have said, this is a an important step. We think this is an important step. But, you know, you can mask and you can continue to, you know, follow these, okay. like, these safety protocols. So we're, yes. but we'll get to that. But We'll get to that. But yes. Because uh, this is something I do think I need to put, say at this point. Yeah in this context that vaccination is actually your individual last dead last line of defense it's yes it's when the virus has gotten into your body and, and in, into your bloodstream and cells right and now you're trying to find in it other off. words every other Everything every other else. chance that you had to avoid to illness. avoid it including just not being exposed to people who were shedding it right yes has failed. Has failed. Everything else has failed. Last right. line of defense. And Absolutely. they have promoted it as the first line right. of defense. Which really inverts reality. It, it, in, it inverts yeah. the fundamental reality of disease control. Yes. Yeah. And I said also, historically, and I did not emphasize this, but we can unpack it a little bit, is it has taken trial and error to get effective vaccines. Yes. Right. We know that the first round, first rounds of polio vaccines were not effective, and one of them actually was very dangerous. Yes. And the killed round, people. The first round of the measles vaccine was um, a lot more dangerous than yes. the one that we use now, and yeah. its and its danger was the reason we use the one we use now. Right. It's so, slightly less effective as a vaccine, right. but considerably safer. Yeah. To administer so population yeah, wide. you want if you if you're really looking for to hit the bullseye on both safety and effectiveness it may take you several tries yes. you know uh, and you'll probably overshoot in one direction each time yeah and historically it has so mm -hmm. it so it's not i don't want to say rational but it's not credible to believe that oh this is our first try this was rushed into production what literally quote warp speed unquote mm -hmm. and that this is going to do it we're going to solve this problem it was Damn. never um, wise to put too much faith in that idea. No, that was a bad call. And I say, I wrote, consider the way these were pushed as if we expected to achieve herd immunity through vaccination, which I always doubted, and as if it would reliably break the chain of transmission. Just get the shot and you will have done everything necessary. And my interlocutor, who's now actually actively rewriting history and gaslighting and it's hard to judge i don't want to say 100 percent that he's knowingly gaslighting because people rewrite their own history oh, right, right. right if they're deep enough in the matrix they are reprogrammable meat puppets where whatever comes out today overwrites whatever okay, they yesterday. heard 
yesterday. You know, Oceania has always been at war oh, with East, East Asia. Asia. Yeah. Well, right. On, right. And he's saying it wasn't really pushed as something to achieve herd immunity. The initial idea was to keep the person being vaccinated from getting the disease. That was one of the initial ideas. Uh, that yes. was Actually, that was mentioned as a tertiary value of the vaccine. Tertiary. Right. The primary right. goal. And I remember reading that they would publish yeah. online and in papers. Right. We've reached X percent that fully vaccinated. We've reached Y percent fully vaccinated. Right. We've right. Reached, and our goal is, uh, I think they said 70 5% yeah. vaccination yeah. was the goal. Yes. And when you, and they were pr promoting that particular goal because all the editorial writers and saying, this is when we get herd immunity. This is when we get herd immunity. Right. And herd immunity is our goal because that will allow us to return to 2019. So return to normal. Return to normal. And one state out of 50 achieved it. Vermont got, I think, 76% sure. of the right. population fully vaccinated in 2022. Uh, yeah, and then he continues, or the, my interlocutor, they continue, and if a higher percentage had taken it, it would probably have slowed down or stopped variants. Yeah. That's a shrug, like, it's a counterfactual, it's really hard to dispute. What's, he, because he's, he's like, um, what is it, uh, brushing with a broad stroke on a specific part of the painting, right? Yeah, right. And pretending the rest of the canvas doesn't exist. Right. If we had deployed adequate vaccine, vaccines for all seven billion human beings right. simultaneously, <laughs> right. Right. then right. that might be true. Yeah, yeah, because variants come from all over. And they're, exactly. So and they're if we, circulating from, and from even literally if worldwide. Just deployed 330 million units of full vaccination, right. all Americans. Right. Because of our, our, I'm going to say, excessive amount of overseas air travel without any protection or mitigation or testing, it would be bringing variants. We'd be bringing back variants. variants. So, so if we d deployed vaccination for all Americans. Right. Because uh, I don't think I still don't think we have a vaccine for under under twos or under ones. Um, like I don't think very so. young children still. I, I, I don't think at this point authorized. in 2023, right. there's still no vaccine for very not, young children. Not that I can recall So here. if we had a vaccinated every American possible to vaccinate, right, two and up, and B continued NPIs to prevent breakthrough transmissions, especially to young children, and then C eliminated air travel into and out of the country without some really stringent gates to right. get in and out. Like, you know, I, I'm, Testing and quarantine I'm personally and not opposed to, if you really need to travel to Wuhan or, Whatever you need or to do. wherever, you know, Mexico City or, or Italy or, or Ireland, whatever, Ireland or, you know, anywhere. Yeah, you're welcome to, but you're going to have to be be um, isolated in a hotel room for 21 days. Yeah. I mean, really, if you if you wanted to test and if isolate... It's, if it's that important to you... You're going to need to plan 21 days to get back in the country. Yeah. Or, and, and into their country, right. ostensibly, for, the, for their... And you're going to have to take, like, I don't know, three, three um, molecular tests, so we're going to be shoving things up your nose a lot. Oh, a molecular, a molecular test when you go in? Yeah. And two negatives in a row yeah. to get out. Yeah. So that implies at least three, but possibly more. Right. Um, and with yeah. that kind of gatekeeping around the border right. and that kind of vaccine effort inside the country, then what he's saying may have been true. Yeah. Okay. So what I said was, I disagree about much of that, but I don't think I can unpack it all tonight. I would hope we agree that it would have been better to promote effective NPIs from day one and continue to promote them and not, quote, six feet apart and, quote, use hand sanitizer. And this is where your interlocutor... Uh, I, I should say I always have to... Becomes untethered. Sometimes my sentences have to get kind of compacted to fit into a tweet, so oh, I, sure. like, have to go back and remove extra words and they don't always have grammar Make as much sense as you yeah, hoped or had but, the grammar you'd hoped. And, and they said well i don't know if there is really an official comprehensive definition of npis 
but informally, quote, six feet apart, unquote, and, quote, using hand sanitizer, unquote, would fit the definition. Okay, I'm going to stop you right there <laughs> and right say there. NPI, it, it sounds like he doesn't know that NPI just means non-pharmaceutical non interventions. interventions. And so, of course, these things would be officially non-pharmaceutical interventions. I guess yep. he's, I don't even know what he means here, but I guess he's saying there's no, comp, there's no official list. Of, like, okay. Uh, if you say so. But I think that anyone with a, even a, uh, even a very um, slight involvement or informed about uh, involvement with formal public health or uh, instruction mm -hmm. or even association with formal with mm -hmm. public health of any kind can <laughs> you know can can give you some recommended oh. NPI well no here's the, here's the thing right so an NPI an NPI isn't like an official thing that is that the, the static right an NPI right. it just has meaning it's a it's a yeah. acronym it you, means non-pharmaceutical intervention yeah. and that's you, all it means you made a really good observation that basically mosquito nets are an npi right that you, you have to choose from the arsenal of npis according to the situation right and it doesn't make sense to try to use mosquito netting to reduce the transmission of covid, COVID. because even though mosquito netting is an npi and it's very effective in some circumstances it's a hugely <laughs> effective npi but not for covid right yeah. Anyway, but he he went on in the same in the same jeet. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew much of anything at the start of the pandemic, and there I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake! You, we we knew a lot. I like we knew a lot. You didn't. Perhaps I mean, so, it sounds like a personal. It sounds like a skill yeah, issue. I, I wrote NPI is just non pharmaceutical intervention, so it would include improving ventilation and air filtration and UV treatment, and. They said, among, among many other things, including keeping six feet apart and using hand sanitizer. And what I wrote was, the six foot rule was an arbitrary recommendation that likely did more harm than good because workplaces translated this into, quote, put on a mask only if you have to be within six feet of other employees. Yes. Right. And my... And I linked to an article, which is an MIT study about mm -hmm. the six-foot rule. And it's a good study, and it's interesting. Yeah. And if you delve into the origin of the six-foot rule, what you find is that it was just this number that somebody pulled out of their ass as an arbitrary compromise mm -hmm. between different studies. Yes, right. a compromise between different studies about droplet transmission. Yes. Like, yes. how far does a sneeze travel, right? Right, how, droplets how and not not the smaller particles that we call airborne transmission. Right. Well, yes. it's specifically aerosolized, aerosolized right. which is what um, right. more or less cigarette smoke is. And no one during these first few years of the pandemic, and even now, no one seems to want to admit that, that we know with great clarity and certainty that COVID is an airborne virus that lingers in the air travels and moves like smoke can linger in spaces can travel a lot further than six feet yes can travel through ventilation systems yes. and that you can you know that even in well ventilated places you can still get it because it blow at you or past you or passed right you. through you and you sucked it in yes to the air that you're breathing yes um and, and <sighs> to be very clear this is something we understood in March of 2020. Yeah. It was not actually ambiguous or unclear for right. anybody with the authority to take action right. that this was true. Right. And he's saying, and this is all, all, this phrasing is always a warning, a red flag. Some people's arbitrary translation isn't the fault of health authorities. And it's the some people that is. Like, who are these people? That, that like, yeah, okay, say who you mean. Nobody I knew was saying, I don't need to wear a mask because I'm six feet away. It's obvious that you have a narrative you want to promote and will spin things to match it. Right? I'm which, like, is, which was his assumption when he asked you why. Yes. And, I, and I'm like, this was literally workplace guidance. My employer, and it wasn't just mine. 
yes. at the time literally put up signs that said, you know, beware of COVID, it's dangerous. Wash your hands and stay, you know, stay six, stay six feet. feet apart. Yep. Right? That was it. That's it. It did not mention masks. Now, I have a side thread I'm going to try to get to and come back to about masks, but let's finish this particular thread. It's Twitter or shitter is awkward because if you like reply more than once or to more than one tweet in a thread rather than just sort of taking turns politely, yeah, you wind up creating a tree instead of a single thread, like a Correct. branching thing. And then to, to find the, all the responses, you have to go back and look at like where, look at did, where did it branch off, it branch off. Right? but right. I said this happened in workplaces the initial guidance was hand washing and distancing my boss would get within six feet hold a blue surgical in front of his face then remove it when he moved a foot or two away you don't remember the six foot line markers placed on store floors stickers are still on the floor some places. places you can still see where they were yeah, exactly. Um, and there was another... I think that... Uh, let me see if I can... can find it. Oh, he did reply further. Oh. Um, but I didn't see this until recently. But what I wrote next is, I'm not going to tolerate gaslighting from someone who is trying to push a reimagined narrative that the first three years of this... Of, this, of the first three years of this pandemic as a story of successful leadership and successful disease control. I lived it and I have receipts muting you now. And his response, which I didn't see until I just looked at it now, was, now I'm gaslighting? Gee, I bet you eventually accuse anyone who disagrees with you of doing that. Well, you had one more. Yeah, then one more was a, actually a response to a previous oh. one, which is, your boss was an idiot. There's no public solution for that. Actually, like, there is. But well, uh, I agree, but if he had gotten different guidance from corporate, he might have behaved differently. Yes. So. I mean, there is a public solution. You know, people who are ignorant work at restaurants, and when they do things that violate health policy, yeah, we have yeah. a way of fixing that. Right, and... You know, this is what OSHA is for, but what they're also for, kind the, of asleep on the job. Yeah, you know? County Public so. Health is asleep at the job and has been for three years. And no, I do not accuse everyone uh, who disagrees with me of gaslighting. Gaslight. Well, actually, no, that's not true at all. When they right. are trying to rewrite history. Well, that what, never happened. That, that never happened. happened. That wasn't, you know, no when they're trying to that. rewrite history or rewrite how things went down. Then that that is gaslighting. Yes. And like retell, I mean, tell like a, a little, different story right. about how the vaccines were promoted and what people said about them. There were so many articles and editorials about. Um, so the bee cut keeps coming back. I'm so sorry. We will get out of here shortly. But uh, about. Um, What happened? Sorry, I'm trying to get back. I'm going to pause. Okay. Uh, we're back. The the yellow jacket keeps zooming in occasionally. <laughs> getting Grace's face and everything. And, oh, and my hair. It's uh, a mess, but, yeah. but we're here and we're good. Uh, we're almost done. <laughs> I found the place where one of the replies branched off. Uh, there were two replies to NPI. My my point npi is just pharma non-pharmaceutical interventions mm -hmm. and i made two responses to it and my interlocutor replied to both response replies which branched off the conversation in two directions right right so one of my replies to that was again public health workers knew a lot but were misled an early example of that being fauci's claims that people didn't need respirator type masks yes and they say there was a shortage of masks at the start, so it made sense to leave them to people who had direct contact with infected patients. And I will say two things about it. Yes, that's true. 
That's 100% true. It makes sense to give it to the person. But people you need risk. to not lie to people. It's absolutely vital. It's absolutely, it is, yeah. it should be the, the the first commandment of public health. And uh, actually, it, that's what I've, if you take nothing else away from this podcast, nothing else at all. Yes. That public health is a practice of building trust. Absolutely. Before it's anything else at all, before it's any right. kind of science, or you have to engage in trust. One and of, build trust yeah. and cultivate trust. Now, this is not a great reason to give up on MR, mRNA vaccines, but it is a reason. Mm -hmm. And that reason is that because they have become so toxic because of the level of mistrust, mistrust built up engendered around it, around them by people overselling them. Yes. That I think you can probably get a lot better uptake in people by starting over with a completely a different, different company, company, different vaccine. product. Yes. And saying, at the, trying again, but this time trying to be more accurate about what claims you can well, to be reasonably radically, make. To, number, to do two things. Number one, be radically honest to engender trust and cultivate trust. Yes. And number two, to undersell it. Undersell it and let people be pleasantly surprised. surprised. Rather yeah. than oversell it and have people like, what the fuck, I had the vaccine, how right. am I sick? Right, right. Yeah. Which no Which one should have ever had that misunderstanding. It's happening so very much. Right, and, right. Yeah. But I don't need another booster. Saying, I got sick when I took the other one. What do I need it for? I'm, I, anyone who's going to openly defend this kind of thing, lying by officials, I, I'm done talking to that There's person. no conversation to have. But, There's yeah, no conversation so to have on the subject. Like, it, this made if you're sense. You're going to lie. It makes it made sense to lie. And then the next piece, but public health workers didn't really know anything specific about COVID. And somewhere along the line, I, don't, I can't find my comments now. Somewhere along the line, I wrote down just what we actually knew about coronaviruses, coronaviruses. including SARS-1. Including SARS-1. And how dangerous the long-term effects were and how few people who were studied in longitudinal follow-up mm -hmm. ever recovered. Ever fully recovered. Yes. Um, um, and we had all that data in March of 2020. And I wrote... It did not make sense to undermine trust in public health authorities by lying to the public about their safety, rather than explaining the situation accurately. And they said, were they actually lying or merely incorrect? They were lying. Fucking Dr. Fauci, you think he was incorrect about... No, he was this? lying. Yes. And has admitted as much Yes, that he was, you know... I mean, that, he, that basically, you know, he would call it a little white lie or whatever the hell. He admitted as much in an outdoor interview with a masked journalist sitting 20 feet away. Yes, right. Because he yeah. knows exactly what's up. Right. There was no, quote, accurate, unquote, information available to anyone in the early days of the pandemic. At this point, my head exploded and Grace had to scrape my brains off the walls and stuff them back in my skull and apply some duct tape to hold it all, all together. together. Yes. No, she didn't. But, Not really. Um, I, I don't... So, people keep referring to me as triggered. And I'm like, you know what? My heart rate's not up. No. I'm not, like, a activated in that no. sense. Like, I'm being close where I can just read that. I'm not having a fight-or-flight response. So, I would hardly call that triggered. And at some point, I give up. And you heard the point at which I, I gave up. Yes. Right. Right. But, uh, yeah, the... The reply was, yeah, there was no accurate information to, to available to anyone in the early days of the pandemic. And I don't even know where to begin, so I just stopped. You right, know? like, so, th there's nothing, there's so nothing this, there. That's the thing. I never know. I was talking about this earlier with you. Um, I, I don't, the reason I do this in public yeah. isn't just to try to convince the one person I'm talking to. Oh, you wanted the people to hear the conversation. Because fair, fair. I have, it's not much of a platform, but occasionally some of my tweets do relatively big numbers mm -hmm. and people read them and I get a lot of followers that way. Mm -hmm. And people then, some people then want to engage in good faith dialogue, right? Yes. And actually see what I can learn. And one of the things I do to build trust is if I literally have no information on something or don't know or can't answer it, I say, I, I don't, don't know. know. <laughs> I can't answer And that. if I can, I point them to 
if I Someone have time more. I, and like a, a, a source that I trust, I point them to like, Certainly. there's a really good like um, summary paper on long COVID that appeared in Nature recently. It's yeah. excellent. Excellent. Read um, it. I forwarded that to a lot of people. Um, and from, from my part, I, I do, I do have something similar where I, but I do it on Facebook. It doesn't make a lot of sense on Twitter. It's like Twitter's it, you really a need platform. To, you really need to be able to write at a little bit more length than these you tweets. Know. And I know if I, if I, if I, I guess if you pay, you get more text now. Oh, it's unlimited now if you pay. Uh, but I'm, I'm not given I'm Elon not giving Musk a dime. And if Twitter reaches, if Shitter reaches the point where I have to pay to use it, that'll be the day that I abandon it after about 17 years or something like it's been. So how old is Joshua? Uh, 15, yeah, 15 years. Yeah. It's, I joined in 2008, 18, yeah, 15, 15 years, years. Yeah. right? So, so yeah. I, but it's, it's yeah. really, that'll be like, I don't know, that's going to be weird when that's that happens. Weird. It's like the end of an of an a, era. a weird era. And, and it feels like there it's is imminent. Community, there is community there. Yeah, it's, yeah. I know it's weird and it's it's broken and there are a and lot of trolls. And very ephemeral, of, you know? Yeah, but there is community building going on with people I've never met and it's it, the, I mean it's it's you can't look at social media and say that there it doesn't actually provide any community or social oh it really connection. does especially for people who are housebound or absolutely or have access issues it's it's very real sure. and actually vital community right and it's almost we've almost given up everything else yeah as far as families staying in touch with each other Yes. Which is terrible, but there it is. It's there it is. The, the thing that I do that I think is similar to, like, uh, taking an interlocutor in good faith. Yeah. Um, barring any indication otherwise. Um, I, I do that, I think, a little bit less. But the thing that I do on Facebook is um, I don't block anybody. Yeah. I mean, really, you can say anything you want. You can't swear and you can't personally attack someone. I consider slurs to be personal attacks. Yeah. Right? So, like, using a slur right. would be a personal attack to any member of that group. Right. But so, aside from, like, uh, those two sort of hard and fast rules, yeah. you can have any opinion you want and you can share it. Yeah. And I want people to because every one of us lives in these bizarre silos. Right. And yeah. I think if there's one small place where you can experience the world outside of your silo, I'd like it to be my Facebook feed. Sure. And it's, it's an, it has inherent intrinsic value to me not to remain siloed I, intellectually. I do a lot of what you might call oppo research, like what are, what are the MAGA people and what, what are, are the blue right checks and whatnot. What are, the, what are they promoting? How are they, are they spinning this? What's, yeah, what's going on with them? What do they think is going like on right now? I'd like to understand their arguments. But if this is... When it gets to the point of actually, like, just counterfactually, you know, telling a counterfactual history and gaslighting me. Well, and I, I think I would have, I would not have engaged that conversation on Facebook, but I would have let this interlocutor spool out their gaslighting, their theory, spool out their yeah, theory. Yeah. And really, I, and just to be very clear how far I take this, I don't block fascists on my Facebook page. Yeah. yeah. Now, mind you, fascists generally leave my Facebook they page. They leave of their own accord. Of their own accord. They take themselves yeah. out. They escort themselves out. Yeah. But I, I actually want them there so people can, like, not kid themselves about reality. Yeah, yeah. And people love to kid themselves about right. kid themselves about reality. No, I just, um, I do get a lot of angry replies, but, like, if someone's just using a slur... Like, I, I generally don't engage with that. Or right. I don't mute them. I don't block them in particular if they just drop, like, a single angry slur or, like, you know, you're a moron or, <laughs> or, 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 or you know, whatever they say. What, I, I get a lot of... I, I have that I'm neurodivergent in my profile and people say, so you're retarded? <laughs> like... like uh... Excuse me. <laughs> so I, I don't engage with that, but every once in a while I will, I will do like a single go around with someone. Like someone says, "Delete your account," and I look at their account, and mine is older. So I say, "You first, butt plug," and they say, "Oh, I did get one funny response." The guy said, "So, oh, so you were the, the original, original butt, butt plug?" plug. <laughs> like I have to laugh at that. Some of those things. Anyway, but I'm yeah. not just. I've got. Um, 
40 seconds of recording time left. Use it wisely. So let's uh, let's say thank you for listening to all that and um, and goodbye. And, and goodbye. have a great uh, have a great week. Indeed. Bye bye everyone.